Hey guys, I'm back. I didn't like the way I looked in that last video. <laughs> I was sitting here after all those drinks I've had lately, the aholic. <laughs> I realize I've got to stop that aholicism because it's making me fat. Anyways, I want to just prove it to you guys, okay? It's not that bad. All right. That gut you saw I had to do with the pants and the shirt. Okay, excuses, excuses. Oops, lost you guys. Hold on a second. So listen up. I wanted to just go on again a little bit more about this topic. Because, oh, good Lord. Hold on, guys. Um, because I have this great book that I want to show you. Now, when I was, I think, 18 and I was in cosmetology school, yes, I was a hairdresser and makeup artist, I came across this book. And this actually is a good one. This is a like all-time legacy author and book that you know many anyone in the mind body field pretty much knows about and it's all about how things related to disease um, deal with certain core issues um, spiritual issues um, and so you know there are people that believe in that I'm not saying that you know you make I don't want you to feel like I'm saying you make yourself um, you know, ill if there's something that's life threatening going on, or you know, that's a hard thing to take in. Um, but could you prevent some things if you um, pay attention to yourself emotionally and you're more in tune with yourself? Absolutely, I do believe that. I believe you can do a lot of things to create better health early on if you have awareness. So, what this book is saying about change. Um, and what I really like, because I happened to pick it up right after I got off of this, and I use this um, to inspire me for my topic tonight during the meditation that I gave. Um, and so this one talks about resistance to change. And I just want to warn you guys, um, resistance is the problem. So if you're going to change, you have to first become aware of what the pattern is that's causing the flare-ups in your life or within you and in order to change you have to release the need for whatever it is that you feel is um, the pattern so you gotta first work on that and your mind is the tool which I was explaining in the last video you have to go in with that flashlight and see what's going on within you and why you're attached where does this stem from and figure out, you know, are you having a hard time letting go of it? Is it controlling your mind? No, because your thoughts create what's going on in your mind and you choose those things. So just remember that. Those were some of the key points, right? So then when I'm going on to the book, I noticed what it had a whole subject on just being resistant to change and, and how to build that new, the newer habits. Um, so we all know that the more the bad habits that we stop putting attention on and the more we focus on positives and clean thoughts and purify our mind, um, the more clarity we have and also the less power the bad things have over us, right? So if we're dieting and we think we're addicted to food, that's an example, um, the more that you eat clean and healthy foods, physically you feel better and the less you want the garbage. You just don't like the way it makes you feel anymore. And the more desire, the more that you get those results and the better you start to look and, and feel, naturally that's erasing the power over the bad stuff because it doesn't feel right. It doesn't give you that high anymore. You're just not into it the same way. It makes you feel gross because you're in tune. You feel it. What's going on with your body when you eat too much sugar or salt, right? And you know that there's a consequence that all your hard work could just go kapooey. So the resistance to change is something I just wanted to go over here real quick um, before we all go to bed. And I love how the book says that some of the nonverbal cues, this is what we do. The actions that show up as resistance, for instance, changing the subject, leaving the room, going to the bathroom, being late, getting sick, procrastinating by doing something else, doing busy work, wasting time, looking away or out the window. These are all non-confronts. This is, you know, you don't want to look at something. 
flipping through a magazine, refusing to pay attention, eating, drinking, smoking, creating or ending a relationship, creating breakdowns, um, you know, bad things start to happen around you. Um, that's the whole non-coincidence with things happen for a reason. Um, and we assume a lot of things, you know, about people and we go into our judgments and we go into our victimization. You know, we blame other people for our stuff. And all this stuff stems from beliefs that we've created when we grew up and just, again, validate all the reasons why we can't change. Because we don't think we can change. A lot of times we think we're just stuck. This is who we are. Everyone should just accept us and and it doesn't matter. So we'll keep changing the people around us while we stay who we are, trying to search for someone that's going to tolerate our stuff. And then we call that the soulmate. (laughs) The person you can tolerate us the best. Um, So we give our power to others and we use a lot of excuses. Um, And we try to say that, you know, people won't let us change. Uh, It says here that you don't have the right tools to change. The doctor doesn't want you to, you know, you don't want to because it'll uproot your relationships with your spouse, all kinds of things. Um, I see this with dieting all the time. People go on diets and they're terrified to change. They're they're afraid to actually not eat what the family's eating because it's going to create um, attention on what they're doing. And they would rather not change than call attention to themselves. Or they want to keep dieting a big secret. You know, they don't want to um, not eat birthday cake when there's a birthday, but yet, you know, the 30 pounds overweight. So people, especially when it comes to weight management, have tons of excuses for not changing, tons of resistance. And again, that language and those stories that you tell yourselves about your condition and the whys, and the more you repeat this stuff to yourself, the more you ingrain it, and the more resistant you're being to change, and the less likely you are going to transform and change. Um, You have to really look at your thoughts and what you're telling yourself and why you're creating these roadblocks right up up front before you approach any goal or you're you're trying to change these patterns you have to see what roadblocks you're putting in front of you and the excuses you're making because it's just um, excuses no you're not going to accomplish anything with excuses you got to really look at the truth of what's an excuse and what's reality and a lot of times a coach like myself I can help you discern that and figure out okay where was I making excuses and you know, what is the reality? And, and, and so what if people don't like what I'm doing? Um, I want to do this. And you have to be convicted about your desire to change. So we also have these self-concepts that limit us. We go into too old, too young, too fat, too thin. I'm definitely feeling too fat after that last video. <laughs> and this is my body dysmorphia. You know, that's something I'm working on too. You know, we it's never good enough. We have these patterns of perfectionism and all these things are relevant. You know, we're not talking about just being addicted to food, exercise, like I said before, drinking, smoking, whatever it is. We're talking about things that we carry with us and become a burden in our life and also alienate us from people or make people think badly of us, right? We give them an impression um, that we're unstable because we're suffering with these ways of being and we're unconscious or we're not aware of the impact it has around us. You know, we're, we're running around blindly thinking we're, we're all right and other people around us are affected by our stuff and we don't want to acknowledge that, uh, you know, maybe we could do some self-improvement. So we delay it. Uh, we say things like, I'll do it later. I, I can't do it right now. Um, I'm just too busy. I hear that one dieting all the time. You know, I'm just so busy the next two weeks. I can't start this. Um, I'll think about it tomorrow um, when you know you need it now. There's no time like now. There's a whole book on that called The Power of Now. I'm sure you guys have seen it. And then there's denial. You know, that's a big one. You know, if you're a narcissist type or self-absorbed oh there's nothing wrong with you no never Um, and I can't do anything about this problem Um, this is just the way it is you know that kind of thinking and what good would it do you have to know your why when you approach a goal um, and this is a goal if you want to change something you have got to know your why 
And, you know, the truth is fear is behind a lot of these things. You're afraid you're going to fail. Um, you're not ready. You're afraid of what other people are going to think. There's always fear behind uh, our resistance to change, usually. And there's also, again, an attachment to something in our past that's affecting us now and our future. And so we have to go into that place of forgiveness and really looking um, inside and trying to come to peace and terms with whatever it was that created this this pattern that isn't serving us. You know, a lot of times we're afraid we're going to get hurt or we're afraid to tell somebody um, that, you know, it's going to cost you money. I hear that a lot with programs. Oh, it, it, uh, you're just too expensive. Well, I they know I'm the golden ticket, but they're they're not going to pay for it. And guess what? A year or two years later, they're coming, they're paying for it, and they get their money's worth. And they get their results and they change and they transform because I'm not just working with people for weight management. I'm working with their mind, the psychology, the the resistance. And sometimes people run away and resist me and get in a power struggle with me. And then there are those who are really ready and, and want this shifts and they listen and they know I'm coming from a, a very good intention. Um, that's why they hired me. There has to be trust and I help them find some of the things that are causing them to come up against those walls. That's part of my job when I do transformations. So the transformation of the mind and these meditative tools and, and the ability to look within and really gain your insights, not have to hear it from everyone. You need to change. You're an asshole. You're a bitch. Whatever it is, you know, people are screaming at you in your life, very upset with you. That's a good sign that you know, something's out of balance um, because that's not the reaction you want. And no, you can't control other people's reactions, but that's the universe telling you that something's out of balance. That's your opportunity to go, hmm, maybe I should look at myself, especially when I keep hearing the same theme over and over. So let's see what else um, is here. There's... Um, yeah, and so the repeated patterns she says here are the things that show us the need. For every habit we have, for every experience we go through over and over, for every pattern we repeat, there is a need within us for it. The needs correspond to some belief we have. If there were no need for it, we wouldn't have it, right? There is something within us that needs the fat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, I'm so embarrassed about that last video. Um, that needs the fat, I said it again, trigger, trigger, and needs the alcohol, needs the resistance, needs the failures, and whatever there is, that's a problem for us. So how many times have you said, I won't ever do this again? And before the day is up, guess what you're doing? Picking up that piece of cake, drinking alcohol, buying that dress, knowing you shouldn't be. Um, and so we think we don't have any willpower or discipline and we think we're going to hire somebody who's going to motivate us or, you know, fix it all. Um, or we're just going to ignore and try to dust it under the carpet and keep moving along. Um, but it has nothing to do with willpower or discipline. Whatever we're trying to release, um, she says here in our lives is just a symptom, an outer effect. Trying to eliminate the symptom without working on dissolving the cause is useless. The moment we release our willpower or discipline, the symptom crops up again. So do yourself a favor, guys. Read the writing on the wall. Listen to the voices around you that are trying to tell you something. You may not like it. You may be resistant to it. But just listen and be non-reactive. Take in... The voices in the universe, the situations that you're getting into, and ask yourself with a level of maturity um, what it is that you really want to create and what is not serving you and creating nothing but havoc for you or making you feel like you're not peaceful. Um, and self-worth and doing this kind of work opens many doors. I'm a testimonial to that, and I just want to see people reach their highest potential 
um, not suffer the way that I have much of my life um, until you know I've been able to sort of I'm starting to be able to clear out the attic and get rid of the past and and really be present and live my life um, and it's been great I, I can only tell you that it's not a perfect thing change is always gonna happen and we're gonna keep changing and things are gonna keep bubbling up I think people think because you're a yoga teacher or a meditation teacher you know you're like God or Jesus and you're supposed to look or be a certain way not true it, a lot of things that I've wanted in my life and ended up manifesting didn't necessarily come in the shape or the form or in the way I intended. It came out in some warped version of it um, in a good way sometimes. The form was different. For instance, I started massage businesses and I wanted to be a healer. I wanted to do aromatherapy and hands-on healing as a Reiki 2 practitioner. And what did I get? seven foot athletes <laughs> that wanted to come every day and then the next one and the next one next one so I ended up being a sports massage therapist by default so a lot of things that I've set out to do like teaching group exercise again I just wanted to teach yoga and somehow I got into you know every type of group exercise class on the face of the earth and teaching this much yoga so you have to just be ready to jump in the flow of things kind of see where it takes you but you're listening. You're listening to the universe. You're responding to your thoughts um, and what they're creating in your life. And you're manifesting things by how you speak to yourself, how you speak to others. Your choice of words, your behaviors, they create the reality around you. So if you don't like the reality, you need to look at yourself and why you manifested that. Because you're attracting things to you based on what's going on in here. And if you're on a low level and you're stuck in that low level stuff, you're going to have a lot of lower thinkers and minds around you. When you're ready to go higher, you'll attract higher minds, people that want to vibrate higher, people that want um, more quality in their life. And things will be more peaceful um, because people who are ignorant or who aren't aware or self-aware and who are operating on lower levels... It's a dark place. They dwell in the dark, and there's a lot of dark stuff that comes along with that, and it's usually not very comfortable when you attract all of that stuff. So you want to attract the light, the higher vibrators, <laughs> the people that are um, wanting to create good things with their life. And the only way you can repel those darker things is to go higher. So I hope with me, you'll also try to go higher. It's, again, you might fail sometimes, but give yourself at least a shot at it, and practice makes perfect. Remember, this is a practice, and for beginners, just start with simple terms. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. I am sitting. I am relaxing. And maybe take five minutes. And eventually, over time, you'll get better and better. The mind will get more still. And you can also journal. You can brain dump in a journal and write away all your thoughts uncensored and just lock it up somewhere. Eventually burn it. <laughs> Especially if it's uncensored. You don't want anyone reading that. So that's it for tonight, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I've enjoyed talking to you. And I'm going to bed. <laughs>